You're watching KSL Sports Live. It's your turn, Aggie fans. For the next 30 minutes, we'll be bringing you exclusive content on the 2023 Utah State football team. This is the Utah State Season Preview, brought to you by Mountainland Truck Supply. Yeah, we'll talk with Coach Blake Anderson, quarterback Cooper Lagarde, defensive back Ike Larson, and many others as we ramp up towards kickoff in a month from now and a highlight reel you do not want to miss. But first, let's just go ahead and take that peek at the schedule for this upcoming season. And right away, the Aggies get to test their talents in Big Ten country. The Iowa Hawkeyes on September 2nd. They sandwich their four non-conference games with the conference opener on September 15th at Air Force. The final non-conference game in Stores, Connecticut against the Yukon Huskies. And then, of course, we dive right into Mount West Play CSU, Fresno State, Nevada, Boise State. Those will be their home games in Mount West Play this season. The full schedule can be found at KSLSports.com. As you can imagine, after losing more than 30 players in the transfer portal and a number of assistant coaches moving on, expectations for the Mountain West media were not high for the Aggies in the preseason poll. They're picked to finish eighth in the 12-team conference. Boise State picked to win the conference, followed by Air Force at second. Fresno State, San Diego State also in the top four. A lot of guys on our team can use it as motivation, but for me, I honestly don't care. Respectfully, um, a lot of the media, they don't see the work that we put in during the offseason. Um, they don't know what we're doing, what's going to happen. What matters to me is at the end of the season. It's a preseason prediction. There's a lot of stuff you can predict, and it doesn't go that way. And the year we won the championship, I don't know what we were ranked, but it wasn't good, and we won. So it's a whole new team. No one knows what we can do. We don't even know what we can do. Last fall, Utah State's offense produced nearly 100 yards less and 10 points less per game than the team that won the conference championship the year before. That won't fly if they want to win under the title this year. Yeah, there are a lot of new faces on the field. Just four starters returning to the Aggies offense, and there will be a new voice calling the plays this year, but a familiar one. <laughs> Not so new, right? <laughs> the Aggies kicked off fall camp on Friday, and they may be the biggest mystery in the Mountain West this season with so many new faces both on the field and in the coaching staff. One of those changes is head coach Blake Anderson doing double duty as the offensive coordinator. So I had to be super efficient with my time. I had to ask my wife if she was okay with it, and she was. Uh, as long as we score a lot of points, she said she was. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's cardio every practice, for sure. Uh, I've been a head coach play caller before. Uh, it, I couldn't do it if I didn't have a staff of guys I really trust. Sometimes there's big decisions that need to be made, and instead of there being head coach to coordinator to quarterback, now it's just all one room right there. The quarterbacks are on the same page as, as the head man. He just seems like he loves doing that, so I'm very happy for him, and I'm very excited for everyone to see our, our uh, offense and our new defense. Well, two seasons ago, as an unexperienced sophomore, Cooper Lega was forced into action in Utah State's biggest game of the year. He passed for 171 yards and two touchdowns, leading the Aggies to an L.A. Bowl win. Well, now, for the first time in his career, he's QB1 going into fall. He played in 10 games last season, passing for 1,499 yards, 11 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Through the offseason and in spring practices, Lega earned the trust of his teammates and coaches and has become the unquestioned leader on offense. Coach Anderson said he'd like to see Levi Williams and McKay Hillstead close that gap a bit, but there is no doubt Lega is who he wants under center this fall. He's the guy. He's the guy. And he did everything he needed to to earn that. I've always been confident in myself and preparing myself like I need to get Cooper ready to play when it's, when it's his time. He's a serious guy on the field, honestly. He's... He's locked in, always ready to go. He knows what's going on with the defense. He knows his matchups anywhere on the field. So he's a great dude and a great football player. He proved to our team this spring that he deserves that role and that he's earned it and he's ready for it. And, and I feel like he's gotten better even since spring to now. I know what I can do. And so I'm going to prepare as hard as I can to do what I can. And then really, if I do everything I can, that's what it is. And I think it will be something really good. You got a quarterback, you got a chance to be successful, and, and I feel like we have we have that guy. Well, it will certainly help Lagarde to have offensive targets, the likes of Terrell Vaughn. He was honorable mention all conference last season with 624 yards receiving and five touchdowns on 56 receptions. He also averaged 26 and a half yards per kick return, which included a 100-yard touchdown against Weber State. The challenge now to take the next step and build upon last season's success. 
you saw towards the end of the year, he started to play uh, at a really high level. Someone everyone knows they can compare him to is just like Devin Tompkins and just that quick, fast slot receiver that, that will go make a play on any ball. I got personal goals, you know. So does me and my coach. We all talked about it after last year how it ended. So I just, it's my revenge, honestly. Oh, he's very explosive. It, a fast guy. I don't, he's so quick, he's untouchable. It's here for me now. It's my time. No one knows the Aggies better than the voice of the Aggies, Scott Gerard. You can also hear Scotty G and Hands from 12 to 3 on the KSL Sports Zone Monday through Friday. And as much as you know this team, Scotty, it still has to be crazy to try to make sense of this roster with so many new names and the coaching staff as well. Well, and that's the thing about this team is that, and I, this might be the new world we're living in in the G5, yeah. is that you never know what your team's going to look like from year to year. There's always going to be a considerable amount of turnover. And uh, with the transfer portal the way it is, this might be the new normal for teams like Utah State. Just got to roll with it. Okay, Coach Anderson, this is not normal. Yeah. A head coach taking over as the offensive coordinator. How is this going to be different and how will it impact the Aggies? It's a good question. And I think the number one thing is, is that he has done this before. This isn't new territory. He's had the head coach and offensive coordinator role before at Arkansas State when he was the head coach there. He felt like there needed to be a change in terms of the dynamic of the offense. He wants it to be faster. He wants to use more athletes out in space. He felt like there was a little bit of limitation in terms of who was getting the ball and, and, and the creativity of the offense. He wanted to take that over, and he's excited. He's been really upfront and honest about this is how this is kind of reinvented invigorated him as a coach let's dig into this offense qb1 cooper lega been the guy in the offseason he's the guy going in now how do you think he'll perform as the guy now that he's in this role and he's comfortable in it it's really interesting too because he's had a full offseason of being the guy and that's going to be a really important part now look it was an open competition in spring yeah. he had opportunities to give this job away and he said no i'm going to take it over levi williams made a big push to be the starting quarterback but cooper Lega was able to hold on to that job and so he's had the whole summer to prepare this isn't like when he got thrown into the wolves midway through the year last year and by the way he performed well he went five and two as a starter last year and got them to bowl eligibility after they started the season at one and four. I anticipate big things from Cooper Lega this year. And there's a freshman quarterback from Sky Ridge High School. Yes. We're very familiar with McKay Hillstead. I know they love him. Is there a chance we're going to get to see him on the field? This it year? wouldn't surprise me at all to see a little bit of McKay Hillstead. They absolutely love him. Blake Anderson was on the show with me in hands just a, a few days ago. They said he put on 15 pounds of muscle wow. in the offseason. So I would anticipate that, look, he's got four games to use uh, and still hold on to that redshirt year. It wouldn't surprise Surprise me if in some way, shape, or form McKay Hillstead saw the field this year. Very smart dual threat quarterback who could really help the Aggies. All right. Who are the playmakers on this offense going to be? Number one guy you want to look at is Terrell Vaughn. Dynamic player, had nearly uh, 700 yards of receiving. They line him up in the backfield, fly sweep. He won the game against Air Force on a shovel pass, and he has a kickoff return for a touchdown as well. Terrell Vaughn is your number one playmaker on this team. I actually feel like, with all the uncertainty of this team, I actually feel like offensively they're in a pretty good place coming into this year. And the offensive line. Do they come back? Is that a strength or is that something that's a question mark? Waylon Lapua, who's a big loss, yeah. transferred to BYU. Uh, overall, though, they feel like they've got more depth at offensive line than they've ever had before. They feel like they've got better players at offensive line than they have before. I actually anticipate that they'll be okay in that position group. A lot of things, reasons to be excited about yeah, this offense. Sure. They've got playmakers and they've got a quarterback. All right, we'll talk about the defense later on the show, Scotty. Thanks. You got it. Yeah, great stuff there, guys. All right, you know, nearly 40 players left the Aggies this past offseason. More than 50, though, have been added to the roster. Now, with all of that roster shuffling, it could be hard to know who to watch for this fall. That's where we're going to try to come in. Our top five Utah State players to watch this fall brought to you by Mountainland Truck Outfitters. And, of course, we're going to start off with the sophomore safety, Ike Larson. He was an honorable mention freshman All-American last season after recording 33 tackles, two sacks, three TFLs. He also posted a team-best four interceptions, returning one for a touchdown against Hawaii, and a school record three blocked punts. One resulted in a safety, another in a touchdown. He'll be a key part of the Aggies defense this fall. Don't sleep on safety Anthony Switzer. He transferred from Arkansas State two seasons ago, but suffered an ACL injury last spring, which prevented him from making his Aggies debut. Still, Switzer comes into this season as the fourth most experienced player on this defense, having played more than 1,100 snaps in three seasons at Arkansas State. 
Who will be the Aggies' bell cow running back? Robert Briggs will have the chance to prove he's that ball carrier. Missed the last three games of the season with an injury, but before that... MJ Tafisi played just eight games last season before a season-ending injury, but when he's healthy, he's an intimidating presence. 69 tackles, nine tackles for loss, and a sack last season, which earned him honorable mention all Mountain West honors in 2022. He's out of Alta High School. We already talked about Trell Vaughn as a target for Cooper Lega this fall, but also keep your eyes on Jalen Royals. The junior wide receiver played limited snaps last season, but Coach Anderson says he's one of the fastest on the roster. He has a six foot, 195 pound frame and explosive leaping ability. The former all state high jumper in Georgia will win a lot of 50 50 balls this fall. He is far and away the face of this defense and may frankly be the face of Utah State football this year. Plenty of new faces on defense. Our championship game is over and the champion is crowned. We know that team's going to go to the playoff. Yeah, big change in the Mountain West coming this season. No more divisions. Why Coach Anderson and others in the conference like this switch so much? That's next. Utah State returns five starters on defense this year, but really every player on defense is starting all over again. It'll be a completely different look this fall. Yeah, defensive coordinator Ephraim Banda, he left Utah State just before spring ball started to take the safeties job with the Cleveland Browns. So Blake Anderson needed someone to come in and change the culture on defense, someone he trusts and knows well. That man is new defensive coordinator Joe Cowthon, new to the players, but not to Anderson. Cowthon was Blake's D.C. at Arkansas State for five seasons. He's a tough, no-nonsense coach who brings 33 years of coaching experience to the Aggies' D. Our identity should be playing fast, should be very aggressive, and, and I want to create a lot of takeaways. Great D.C. He has a lot of years under his belt, a lot of knowledge, um, and a lot of success. Uh, the defense is different. It's uh, a bit complicated, but uh, one thing that stands out um, with this defense is our willingness to learn. He's very old school. I mean, he requires and demands a lot out of us, but it's going to be so good for us in the long run. I love every part of it because I love football. Like, if, if, we, if we be up here all day, let's do it. Well, there will be a lot of new on the Utah State defense. They'll be relying on someone who's been in Cache Valley his entire life to lead the way. Ike Larson was the only Aggie named to the preseason all-conference team, the Cache Valley native and Skyview high grad, will be asked to make even more plays this season on defense and special teams. Uh, he, he's tremendously important. He, he just covers so much ground and does so many different things. I mean, the turnovers that he created on defense, the, the coverage plays that he made, I mean, the guy just has a nose for the ball. He plays with no care in the world. He's not scared of anything. He's, he knows where the ball is going, and he'll, he'll attack it. You know, there's always room for improvement, so I'm just going to go out there, give my best, you know, every game, you know, leave it out there on the field, and, you know, I'll be happy as long as I'm doing, doing my job. All right, we welcome Scott Gerard back into the studio with us to talk a little bit more about this Utah State team that we should be seeing on the field this fall. Let's switch it over to the defensive yeah. side of the ball, Scotty. I mean, this is a defense that's been through a lot this offseason, starting with the coaching, right? Efren Banda had an opportunity to move on. He moved on. So there's a new identity of this Utah State defense. What is that identity? Well, it's going to have the same philosophy. And I think it's important to know that their dynamic defensive pressure, they love to get downfield. They love to create tackles for losses. They had the most in the last two years of any Utah State team in a two-year stretch in school history. So that's their IMO. They want to get after the quarterback. They want to create havoc. That's still going to be the case for this team. So keep an eye on that. They will still try to create havoc. It's a different defensive coordinator but for somebody that's just walking out into the stadium and looking at this team it's going to look pretty much the same I and mean, one guy who does create some havoc up front is Hale Motuapuaka how valuable is he to what they want to do defensively up at Utah State yeah for a defensive group that just absolutely got decimated that team both on and off the field he's a big leader on that team he seems like he's been there for the last 10 <laughs> years uh, but what linebacker MJ Tafis he said Holly's a father figure on the team but when I was talking to MJ he also said he wants to be one of the leaders on the team is MJ capable not only being a leader in the huddle but in the middle of the defense well and that's the other thing too with MJ that's really important to keep an eye on is that this is a guy that's coming off a really significant injury mm -hmm. uh, wasn't able to finish the season last year had he finished he would have led the team in, in tackles by a mile he's that kind of a player he's back he's healthy great leader on the team and I anticipate he'll be able to handle that role and will probably be about a hundred tackle guy this year 
I think there's another guy that might be flying under the radar because of injury from last season. We're talking about Anthony Switzer, right? Yes. This is a defensive back that not a lot of people are hearing about, and he says it's because he wasn't on the field last year, but he expects big things of himself. Anthony Switzer is a really dynamic player, and this is a guy that also is going to be able to cover, make big tackles, great in run support. And you're right, we didn't see him last year because of the injury. Arkansas State player the year before, he is a guy to keep a really close eye on because they're a little thin in that defensive backfield, and he adds a lot of a, a, a lot of depth there and a lot of playmaking ability. Of course, a lot will be expected of Isaac Larson, though, his yes. fellow defensive back, fellow safety. What step can Ike take in this second year? Uh, boy, the sky's the limit with yeah. this guy. He really is. Four block punts on the year last year. Four. <laughs> ridiculous. It's just a ridiculous number. And also, he's able to help out in run support. They'll use him in blitz package. A bunch of interceptions. One pick six, a big one against Hawaii. Uh, won the game against UConn with an interception in his first game out on the field. This guy, the moment's never too big for him. He is far and away the face of this defense. And may frankly be the face of Utah State football this year. Skyview kid, close to home. Really great player. And I think that... Frankly, I mean, outside of his frame, he's a little on the small side. I don't see why this guy can't be playing on Sundays here in, a, in two or three years. A lot of exciting things on that yeah. Utah State defense. Scotty, thanks a lot. You got it. Here are the top five games on the schedule brought to you by Mountain Land Truck Outfitters. Number five, a trip to Stores, Connecticut for a rematch with the Huskies. Utah State won Latcher's game in Logan. Number four, Colorado State in Logan, October 7th. It seems like every game in this series is bananas. Can't wait for that one. Number three, Air Force in Colorado Springs on September 15th. We're going to find out how this Utah State team matches up with a conference contender on that day. Number two, a trip to Big Ten country, which is basically the entire country starting next year, right? They take on the Iowa Hawkeyes. The team's met twice back in 1957 and in 2002 in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes winning that last one 48-7. And number one on the list, Boise State comes to Logan this season Saturday, November 18th at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Now you're seeing it become more common across the college football landscape. Divisionless football. The Pac-12 is doing it. The Big Ten, Big 12, and ACC are also on board with that format. And now so is the Mountain West. Taking the top two overall teams to play in the conference championship game instead of two division champs makes a lot of sense. The move comes with changes, adjustments to the schedule that could do away with some longtime rivalries for a season or two. Like Utah State doesn't play Wyoming this year. But it all comes with one big goal behind it, to be a relevant conference come playoff time. The reason we got rid of divisions is so that when, when our championship game is over and a champion is crowned, we know that team's going to go to the playoff. That's the whole goal here. I'm supportive of it. Um, you know, we're not playing Utah State this year, which I'm disappointed in, but I, I think it's a really good deal. I like it. I think it's good. I mean, I think it's uh, if you're going to get, I think, you know, the two best teams, uh, right, uh, into uh, uh, a championship, I think it's okay. The champion of the top six leagues in the country are automatically in. And there is not, there's no doubt in my mind we're in the top six. This league is the best group five league in the country, in my opinion. Giving our two best teams in this league the chance to compete for the championship gives us the best chance to get into that conversation. We believe our conference can be one of the top six conferences. And that opens up tremendous avenues for us. I think the Mountain West Conference is a great football league. I think we're, I mean, you can have, you can say whatever you want about Power Five, Group of Five. Uh, if you look at our record against those conferences over the last few years as a whole, uh, we compete with those guys, with anybody in the country. So I think it's a, I think it's a really smart thing by our conference to move in that direction. I can't imagine us being a better place than we are right now, moving into that new era. Yeah, they'll definitely be top six in 2024. Hey, you know, it's time to heat things up for Aggie fans. The Utah State highlight reel is on the way. You do not want to miss this. So what can we expect from the Utah State Aggies this season? Well, nobody knows, and isn't that what makes this all yes, fun? Certainly does. You know, maybe they'll shock everyone just like they did two years ago, win the title. Why not the Aggies, right? And why not some fall camp hype? Here's the highlight reel brought to you by Mountainland Truck Outfitters.
Blake Anderson error. We hope you enjoyed that, Aggie fans. Thanks to Mountain Lad Truck Outfitters for sponsoring this year's Utah State football preview on KSL Sports Live. Next Saturday, 6 p.m., Game Night Live returns to KSL 5, a full high school football schedule.